Greetings, everyone. Pastor G here, and Pastor V from Covenant Kingdom International Ministries. This is, it's a beautiful day out here. Uh, we're getting ready to do a series, a three-part series on uh, spiritual warfare, and we've done uh, several messages on, on spiritual warfare before, but we want to do this one a little bit different. We want, we want to specifically cover the three areas of uh, spiritual warfare. The first area of spiritual warfare, or the, let's say that there are the enemies, our enemies that are identified in spiritual warfare is number one, the flesh. Uh, the Bible tells us, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, so you say, Pastor, wait a minute, <coughs> excuse me, Pastor, you said that the first enemy is flesh. But then you quote a scripture that says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So, And we're going to break this down. Because what he's talking about there, what the Apostle Paul is talking about there, when he says we're not fighting against flesh and blood, we're not fighting against one another, each other. But then when the Bible talks about the fight against the flesh, uh, I believe it's in the book of James where he says, uh, we are to war against fleshly lusts that war against our souls. Amen. So it's this, the carnal nature. That's the flesh that we're talking about fighting. That's our enemy in this uh, race as we uh, run the race for Christ, as we run the race for, for Christianity, as we fight the good fight of faith. Amen. The second enemy identified in spiritual warfare is uh, the world, this world system. You know, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, be not conformed to this world or to this age. Amen. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it goes on to talk about uh, about other things that we're going to get into uh, to that scripture as well. And then the last enemy that we're going to face, the last enemy, the enemy that we have to contend with now is the devil. That's right. It's Satan. The Bible tells us that Satan cometh not but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. But then Jesus backs it up. He gives us some encouragement. He says, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So me and Pastor V want to really delve into this, these, uh, this three-part series, spiritual warfare, the enemies that we have to face. Your flesh, our flesh, this world system, and the devil, Satan himself. That's right, because he is the accuser of the brethren. But we want to encourage you. We wanna, we're going to go deep into this scripture. We're going to talk about the moving, the working of angels, the ministry of angels, and uh, 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 demons. Amen. Operate the, the 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 operation of things in the spirit realm. Amen. And uh, we we encourage you to research and and study out everything that we that we teach that the Lord has given us to teach you because uh, we need to be like the Berean Christians. Paul said uh, that the Berean Christians, what the Berean Christians did, he says, they searched the scriptures to see if what the apostles were teaching was true. To see if what the apostles were preaching was true. To verify that what they were preaching bared witness with their spirit. And, and the Bible says, God commended them. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, not to men, not to each other, not to impress anybody. But to show ourselves approved unto God, that a workman needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And by inference, that means that you can incorrectly or unrightly, <laughs> wrongly divide the word of truth. Amen. So we want to be accurate when we're uh, 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 teaching and, and preaching the word of God. Oh, this is going to be a wonderful, a wonderful eye-opening, awakening series. Hallelujah. We can't, can't, we can't wait to get into it. Ah, hallelujah. So this is Pastor, again, Pastor G from Pastor, and Pastor V from Covenant Kingdom International Ministries. We pray that you and are enjoying the content that we're putting forth. And uh, we ask that you give us a thumbs up. Amen. Give us a like. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel and uh, go ahead and share. And of course, yes, hit that bell so you can be notified every time we produce a broadcast, whether it's live streaming or by a uh, recorded message. Uh, we want to thank God. We want to take this time to thank God for the, the 400... Oh, hallelujah. The 400 followers of us on, on YouTube. Amen. And we have 130 something on, uh, on Facebook. And uh, I believe 110, 115 on, in not Instagram, but, um, but LinkedIn. Amen. So whatever social media uh, platform that you're following us on, uh, we are grateful. We are grateful for your support, for your prayer and your financial support. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, 
we look forward to uh, to seeing you, Amen. Uh, join join our broadcast when when we begin to uh, share with you this series on spiritual warfare, Amen. Our, our enemies that have been identified in spiritual warfare, Amen. War against the flesh, war against this world system, and war against Satan himself. And then also we're gonna we're gonna probably delve into angels as well. Hallelujah! The operation and the move of angels in the spiritual realm as well as the demonic realm. Amen. We're not going to get too deep into, we're not going to, we don't, we don't want to get sidetracked into demonology, but we are going to touch on how demons move. Amen. And I, what I want to encourage you, even though there's an increase, oh Lord have mercy, even though there's an increase of demonic activity in the earth right now, I want you to be encouraged because even though there's an increase of demonic activ activity, there is also an increase of angelic activity. Amen. Hallelujah. God and his angels and his angel armies uh, assist us in this warfare. So we have angelic assistance in this spiritual warfare. We don't have to fight by ourselves. Glory to God. And here's another encouraging note. Only one third of the angels fell. Amen. So in angels alone, we outnumber the enemy's camp two to one. Now that's shouting ground right there. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is Pastor G from Covenant Kingdom International Ministries. Thank you again for your support. Uh, get ready to, to lean in, amen, and listen, open, give us your ears, give us your heart, amen. The Bible says, let him that have ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And we are definitely giving you what the Spirit of God has given us to release unto you. So we pray that you are receptive and that you learn something, that you can share this with somebody else, amen, hallelujah. Because God, at the end of the day, no matter who it is, no matter what it is, God is trying to save a soul. And we, want, we don't want you to be a casualty of the enemy of this world system or of the flesh in this warfare. We want you to battle effectively so that you can win in this warfare. We all wanna win, amen? Glory to God. So again, Pastor G and Pastor V from Covenant Kingdom International Ministries, we love you guys. Thank you for uh, viewing our broadcast, signing into our broadcast. We give God all the glory, the honor, and the praise. So amen, get ready, watch this, and enjoy the word of God. Bye-bye. the flesh there are two actually three words for the flesh in Hebrew word is basar it means the skin or meat of animals or man and in the Greek version of the word there are two versions of the word in Greek sarx and soma the body both of men or animals a dead body or corpse and then the bodies of planets and of stars or heavenly bodies. The flesh or carnal nature denotes the sinful element of human nature, the earthly nature of man apart from divine influence as opposed to the spirit and therefore prone to sin and opposed to God. We see that in Romans chapter 6 verse 19 and Matthew chapter 16 verse 17. Being in the flesh means being unrenewed and to live according to the flesh is to live and act sinfully. The flesh, the carnal nature, is weaker. Is the weaker element in our human nature. The flesh or the carnal nature is the seat of sin in man. But this is not the same thing as in the body. And we see that in 2 Peter 2.18, 1 John 2.16. And the last point here, the lower, the, the flesh, the carnal nature is the lower and the temporary element of the Christian. That's the carnal, that's carnality, carnality, the carnal Christian and religious ordinances. So we pray that you are blessed by this message. The enemies of our spiritual warfare, the flesh. Greetings and praise the Lord, saints, and all of you watching our YouTube channel. We welcome you 
to our broadcast. Amen. Hallelujah. And we want to give God a special praise. Just give God a shout of praise for all 455 of you that are viewing our broadcast. Amen. And for those of you that have shared our broadcast, amen, to uh, get that 455. Uh, let's go 50, Let's go uh, 45 more so we can get to 500. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember when we first started, we could barely get 10. It was a struggle to get 10. And then when we got 20, we were shouting, amen, praise God. And then we got to 50, we said, man, we thought we were doing something, <laughs> hallelujah. And then we hit 100, it's like, man, we got 100 folk following us. And now we up to 455. I thank God for those that are, that are, that are toting two, uh, 2K, 34K, 15K, 100K. God bless them, amen, hallelujah. And we just thank God for that for the ones that he have assigned to us amen the ones that you take the time to listen and to tune in to what that god has given us to give to you amen both me and pastor v praise god so again a, a shout out of praise for each one of you amen each each one of you 455 on youtube and then there's some of you following us on uh, on facebook and some of you following us on um on linkedin amen so we give god all the glory and the praise for all of you that are following us on those different platforms hallelujah and so we're jumping off on our first, we're doing a three-part series on, on warfare, amen, on spiritual warfare, glory to God. And we, we've done several messages on warfare before, but the Lord has said, I want you to uh, take your time on this one, and I want you to just, uh, we're going to do three segments, amen, we're going to talk about, we're going to, each and each segment is going to center on a, on a specific part of warfare that we deal with on a regular basis, on a, a daily basis, amen, hallelujah. So uh, at the outset, I'll just go ahead and let the cat out the bag, as it were. The first uh, enemy of our in our warfare is the flesh. Amen. We have to battle with the flesh. Amen. There is war with the flesh. And then our second enemy is the world. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to deal with this world system. That's that's another one of our enemies that we have to contend with in spiritual warfare. And then our, our, the last enemy, amen, is, and the last enemy that will be defeated is Satan. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Satan is the, is a, is an enemy of the saints. Glory to God. The, the Bible tells us that he's a father of lies. Amen. That nothing comes, nothing that comes from him is truth. Glory to God. He's the prince of the power of the air. Amen. He's a God of this age, but I don't want to get into all of that right now. Amen. Cause we're going to talk about that when we, on our, on our final series on part three of our series, when we talk, uh, talking about, uh, Satan as our, as, as one of our, our enemies in spiritual warfare. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's, let's just start off with prayer. Amen. And then we're going to dive into the word. Heavenly Father, we just want to give you glory, honor, and praise. This is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Father God, for another day of life, another day of strength, another day of health, another day, Lord God, that you have seen fit to allow us uh, uh, to, to, to live. Amen. It is your breath in our lungs, and we call out your praise. We holler your praise. Amen. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor, and we give you praise for life today, for strength today, for health today. Hallelujah. Another day, Lord God, that you have empowered us to engage in effective warfare against the flesh, against the world, and against the enemy. Hallelujah. The devil. Glory to God. Those three enemies, Lord God, we said, we just, we give you praise that you have given us authority over them. Hallelujah. Your word says that uh, we, you have given us authority over all the power of the devil. Hallelujah. I keep going, keep, keep going back to dealing with the devil. Amen. But we're going to get to the devil <laughs> on our third, on our third message. Amen. But Father, you thank you. And your word also instructs us concerning our flesh, that we are to crucify this flesh, that we are to handle this flesh roughly and bring it into subject, subjection. As Paul said, I handle my flesh roughly and I bring it into subjection, lest by enemies after I have preached to some or preached to others that I myself, I might be disqualified. Imagine that being, being disqualified from the very, from the very gospel that you were called to preach. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Let, let not, let that, let not that be said of any of you who are believers. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So the, dealing with the flesh, amen. Dealing with this stinking flesh. Yeah, I call it stinking flesh because you don't bathe one day, two days. Amen. It, it can't go one day without smelling bad. Amen. Hallelujah. So you got to wash this thing. You got to clean this thing up. You got to perfume it. You got to color it. You got to paint it. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to do so much thing with this flesh. You got to pump it up. You got to exercise it. You got to feed it. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to detox it. Amen. Cause if, well, we, that's Pastor Vince's specialty. Amen. When we're dealing with the, dealing with the flesh, eating right. Amen. We, we just got to deal, de de deal with this flesh in the, in the right way. The Bible tells us that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so what do you do with a temple? 
You keep a temple clean. You keep a, you keep a temple unpolluted. You keep a temple undefiled. Amen. Are you all hearing me today? Amen. Hallelujah. So in, 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 in taking care of our flesh, we have to guard the gates of our flesh. Amen. So that we do not pollute. Amen. Or infect the temple with things that don't belong in the temple. Amen. We got to watch our eye gates. We got to watch what we see, what we're looking at. We got to protect our air gates. Amen. What's coming into our ears? Who is whispering in your ears? Amen. What are you lending your ear to? Goss are you lending your ear to gossip? Are you lending your ear to malicious talk? Be careful. That's an air gate and it will affect your soul. Amen. And then there's this mouth gate. Amen. What's coming out? What, what are the words that are coming out of your mouth? Amen. We're going to talk about that. Amen. Hallelujah. And then you have the, your sexual organs. Those are gates as well. Amen. Amen. And then the nose gate, the smell, the smell gate. Amen. And, uh, uh, uh we'll let Pastor Vincent talk about that in, in one of our messages. Amen. Talking about the, that nose gate, how you can sense, uh, the, the enemy, how you can sense things in the spirit through the nose gate. Amen. We're not going to get too, too deep off in that. That's a whole nother lesson for another time. Amen. Glory to God. So, Lord, we just thank you. Give me wisdom. Speak, think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords that I may say what you would have me to speak unto these, your people, your sheep. As we delve into this subject of spiritual warfare, dealing with our three enemies, dealing with our flesh, dealing with the world, and dealing with Satan. But today, Lord, we're going to focus in on dealing with our flesh. Give us your word. Give us, give me words to speak and the people words to hear. For your word says, them that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Father, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. So let's jump right off, amen. So let's jump right in, amen. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> In conclusion, and we're starting at the 10th verse, and I'm reading from the Amplified uh, Bible, amen, and uh, uh, perhaps our producer can put the, the scriptures up, amen, glory to God. Ephesians chapter 6, starting at the 10th verse. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him, that strength his, which is boundless, His boundless might, which his boundless might provides. Let me read that again. Amen. In conclusion, this is the conclusion of the matter. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. So we are one with Christ. Amen. We're empowered by being in union with Christ. Hallelujah. Draw your strength from him. That strength with, with which his boundless might provides. So he is Jehovah Jireh. He's the Lord who provides. He provides us with boundless strength. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 11. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully stand up against all, not some, not most, not a few, but stand up against all, hallelujah, the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Amen. Glory to God. For we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents. Amen. So listen, let me pause there for a minute. So we're not fighting against flesh and blood. I'm not fighting against you. I'm not fighting against uh, uh, anybody else out there. Amen. I'm fighting against enemies out there. But, but you said, oh, and like we said in the introduction, you said, Pastor, hold up. You said the Bible, you just read from the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. Amen. That's good enough for you. It's good enough for me. Basic instructions before leaving earth. And then a, another, another acronym for the Bible. Amen. Is the, the, the believers. Hallelujah. Catch this now. B I B L E. Believers instruction book for life and eternity. B I B L E. Okay. All right. All right. Y'all will catch that. Amen. Hallelujah. So the flesh that we're fighting, the flesh that we're dealing with, the flesh that we're fighting against is this right here, the carnal nature of man. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to get to that in the book of Corinthians. Amen. But let me keep our reading. Amen. Hallelujah. For we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, of this present age, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the second heaven. Glory to God. Verse 13. Therefore, this is how we are uh, 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 instructed to uh, protect ourselves in this warfare. Therefore, put on God's complete armor 
that you may be able to resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done all to stand, the, the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, of course, he, uh, he, he, he gives us uh, the parts of the armor, how we are to be dressed. Stand, therefore, holding your ground. Amen. Having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity or the breastplate of righteousness, the King James calls it. And uh, the, in the, uh, the Amplified, it calls it the breastplate of integrity and moral rectitude and right standing with God. Hallelujah. And having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability. Amen. Talks about the shoes of peace. Amen. Let your feet be shod with the shoes of peace, the sandals of peace. Amen. The promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. With our going forth with a readiness to preach and teach the word of God. Are y'all hearing me today? Hallelujah. Verse 16. Lift up over all covering the shield of faith, of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need that shield of faith to quench every fiery dart, every fiery plan, every fiery strategy. Amen. And every fiery scheme of the devil. Amen. And then uh, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the word and the sword that is the, which the spirit wields, which is the word of God. Amen. Pray at all times on every occasion and every season. Hallelujah. We got to always be praying. The Bible tells us we are to, man ought to always pray and not faint. Amen. Hallelujah. That we are to pray without ceasing. Amen. In the spirit, praying in the spirit, Jude, tell, Jude 20 tells us, building up ourselves in our most holy faith, praying in the spirit, keeping ourselves in the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is good. This is good. Amen. And praying on every occasion, in every season, in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch. So we are to be watching and praying. Amen. Hallelujah. With strong prop, with a strong purpose and perseverance, you got to persevere. You got to be able to stand. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us that we are to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. That's perseverance. Amen. Hallelujah. Interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Amen. Hallelujah. So not only are we praying for ourselves, not only are we watching and praying, but we are also praying, interceding, standing in the gap, making up the hedge. For the saints of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So as we are dealing with this flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me read another scripture. Hallelujah. Sometimes you get, you got to put the flesh on alert. And I, I got this thing. I got this whistle here. You, sometimes when your flesh is acting up. Sometimes when you, when you want to. Uh, somebody uh, crossed you. Somebody you drive in and somebody cut you off. And you want to cuss them out. You want to flip them off. Amen. Amen. And, and, and some, of, some of you had a hard day. Amen. Let's let's get real. Uh, you had a hard day and you want to go home and you want to, you know, you want to crack the top of that beer. Amen. You want to go uh, get, uh, take a swig of that, 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 that liquor, that oil. Amen. That's that's your that's your flesh. That, that's that is your flesh crying out for attention. Amen. That's your flesh want to be fed. Amen. But sometimes when you when your flesh is crying out, you got to cry out. All right, flesh, get in line, get in, get in line. Hallelujah. Blow the whistle on your flesh, amen? Hallelujah. Blow the whistle on that flesh. Bring it into order, bring it into line, amen? Listen to this uh, from, from James chapter 4, verse 1. Again, from the Amplified, he says, What leads to strife, discord, and feuds? And how do conflicts and quarrels and fightings originate among you? Do they not arise from your sensual desires? That are ever warring over your bodily members. Then it goes on to say in the message. Listen to what the message, the message, the message paraphrase says. He says, where do you think all these appalling wars and quarrels come from? When people are fighting against each other, when people are quarreling with one another. Amen. Where, where is that coming from? He says, do you think they just happen? Oh no, by no means. Think again. They come about because you want your own way. And fight to keep and fight for it deep inside yourselves. So you see these things that we see manifesting in folk, manifesting from folk. That's 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 what's within them. That's who they are. 
Amen. They have not yet been converted. Uh, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says that we are not to be conformed to this world, but we are to be transformed. Amen. We are not to be con conformed to the ways of this world. We're not to be conformed to the image of this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove it is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then again, concerning the flesh, the Bible tells us, I believe it's in Peter, and I I'll get the scripture in a minute, that we are to war against fleshly lusts, Amen. We are to fight or resist or abstain. That's the word. He says we are to abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Let me just read. I'm going to yeah, read a couple of scriptures here. Let me read. First Peter, that's First Peter 2, 11 to 12. He says, Beloved, I implore you as angels, as aliens and strangers and exiles in this world to abstain from sensual pleasures, the evil desires, the passions of the flesh, your lower nature. Amen. So hey, look at me. Amen. The, the dealing from the flesh, working from the flesh, operating from the flesh, functioning from the flesh is operating from a low, your lower nature. Amen. Let's rise up in the spirit. Let's operate from the place of the spirit. Let us function from the place of the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Listen at this. He says, conduct yourselves properly honorably oh i'm sorry let me go back to the to the to the to the the key part of the verse amen he says these evil desires the passions of your flesh your lower nature that wage war against your soul that's the part i want to bring out amen he says we need to uh abstain from the fleshly natures amen from these fleshly lusts that war that rage war against our soul and the war the the the, the part of our soul is made up of six six areas or six components amen uh your mind your will your intellect, your imagination, your emotions, and your memories. Amen. All those make up the soul. Glory to God. And that, that's, again, that's another lesson for another time to break that down. Amen. Hallelujah. How each part of your soul affects the, even, even though each part of your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, your imagination, your emotions, and your memory, even though they are, they, they are separate entities, separate uh, elements, I, I say that. Amen. They all, they, they hinge and they touch one another and they, uh, they eff affect each other. Amen. Glory to God. Again, that's a, another lesson for another time. Amen. Let, let me let me continue in this script. He says, verse 12 of uh, 1 Peter 2. He says, conduct yourselves properly. Conduct yourselves honorably, righteously among the Gentiles, among those who are without. Amen. So that although they may slander you as evildoers, yet they may be witnessing your good deeds. Amen. Hallelujah. So look, listen, now, listen, y'all. Because you name the name of Christ, they talk about you. They laughing about you. You know, we are not perfect. Amen. We have flaws. We make mistakes. You know, but the first thing you, you will hear them say, I thought they were a Christian. I thought he was a pastor. Well, how, what, what business he got doing that or saying that? Amen. Not knowing that we are fallible beings ourselves. And we don't, pro we don't profess to be faultless. Amen. We are perfect, meaning complete in him, yet being perfected. Amen. Day by day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope you all are encouraged. Amen. Keep living before them. Amen. No matter what they say around your back, no matter what they say behind your back, because they'll call you at night and want to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Listen, listen. Yet they may be witnessing your good deeds. Come to glorify God in the day of inspection. Mm -hmm. When God shall look upon your look upon you as wanderers, as a pastor or shepherd who looks over his flesh, over his flock. And we just preached a me uh, not 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 just, but we uh, we preached a message on the on, on Psalm twenty three. Glory to God. We did a, a, a round table, so, so to speak, on Psalm twenty three, and, and 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 talking about the names of God, the covenant names of God in Psalm number twenty three. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just continue. We read on. A couple more scriptures, amen. And we we'll have our producer put these up, amen. Uh, Galatians chapter five, verse twenty-four from the Amplified. And those who belong to Christ, the Messiah, have crucified the flesh. Look at me, crucify. They have crucified those that belong to Christ, the Messiah, have crucified the flesh. You know what it means to crucify something? It means to put it to death, kill it dead. Amen, <laughs> amen. Kill it dead, amen. Give the flesh no space, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and those who belong to Christ, Jesus, the Messiah, have crucified the flesh, the godless human nature, with his passions and appetites and desires. Amen. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 from the Amplified. So kill. Listen. Oh, God, this is good. So kill, deaden, deprive of power, the evil desire lurking in your members. 
those animal impulses and all that is earthly in you that is employed in sin, sexual vice, impurity, sensual appetites, unholy desires, and all greed and covetousness, for that is idolatry, the defying of self and other created things instead of God. So that really, uh, that really seals it right there. Amen. Going back to the point that I made before, that th th our, our fleshly desires, our unholy desires, the drinking, the cussing, the smoking, the fornication, the adultery, the pornography, uh, the, the, the slander. Amen. The gossip. All of it. All of it is sin. Amen. Hallelujah. And we need to be cleansed by it. Amen. By the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. But these are the, these are the, 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 the fleshly lusts that war against our soul. Amen. The enemy of our soul. Amen. Is our flesh. But we need to bring this flesh under subjection. That is the fight that we're fighting in. The Bible tells us to fight the good fight of faith. And any good fight is the fight you win. Hallelujah. The fight that you go into and the fight that you engage in and you get scuffed up and you get beat up and, dr and get called drug or whatever. That ain't no good fight. Amen. The fight that the good fight is fight when you knock that enemy down, when you knock him out, when they got scuffed up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me read, let me read, let me read this point to you. We all have flesh and we all are responsible to do something with our flesh. Amen. We have a responsibility to handle our flesh. Amen. Somebody, the flesh is strong and must be crucified daily. Amen. If you don't put this thing down daily, it's going to rise up. You know, there's a story that says, uh, the one that, and, 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 and I'm not going to tell the whole story, but the, 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 the base of the story is the, the, the one that you feed the more, the one that you feed the most is the one that's going to have the most power. If you, are you feeding your flesh more than you're feeding your spirit? Whoever is, whoever is getting the best meals, who's get whoever, whoever's getting the steak. Amen. And, 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 and bean, and beans and rice. Amen. And okra and, 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 and fruit and vegetables. Amen. And, uh, and plantains and fried fish. The one who's getting all, <laughs> the one who's getting all that is the one who's going to be the stronger. Amen. The, 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 the person that you feed the most is the one that's going to have the most power. So are you feeding your flesh more than you feeding your spirit? Or are you feeding your spirit, man, more than you feeding your flesh? And then, and then, and then, thank you, Lord. Some of us are so, uh, into, uh, academia. nothing went wrong with school, nothing wrong with academia, but we spend so much time studying, studying this and studying that and, 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 and going to this class and going to this school. I have nothing against education, but our minds are so filled with stuff. Amen. I remember one minister said he had a vision. He went to a university to, to, to preach a, a message. And God gave him, uh, uh, God let him see in the spirit. He said that their heads were so, and in the spirit, what he saw was, uh, uh, these, these beings, these people with, with huge, large heads, but with emaciated bodies. And what God was showing him is that their heads were so filled with knowledge, so filled with worldly knowledge, but their spirits were sucked up and dried because they were, they were feeding, they were not feeding on any word at all. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God that a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Hallelujah. So we study to show ourselves approved unto God. We study to feed ourselves. We meditate on the word to feed ourselves. Amen. To feed our spirit man. Hallelujah. That we may walk right before God. That we may do those things that are pleasing in his sight. That we may have good success. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. So we know that we have to crucify our flesh daily. Amen. Sometimes hourly, mm -hmm, minute by minute. Amen. When, when, let's, uh, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> let me ask you a question. When does your flesh rise up the most? When you're alone? Or when you're with people? When you're with folk? When you go out? When you're at the bar? When, uh, when? That's a question only you can answer. When does your flesh act up the most? That may be a place or a time that you need to pull away from. Ah, uh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Don't go around the place that draws you down, that pulls on your flesh, knowing that, that you have a weakness in that area. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Until you get built up in the spirit. Amen. Till, till you get built up to a point where you can overcome that part of your flesh. I remember our pastor. Oh, this is good. Uh, a, a young man was was trying to overcome smoking. 
He says, Pastor, I want to stop. I know I need to stop. But I want to stop. But I've been smoking since I was a little boy. My uncles and them, my cousins and them say, hey, you want a little hit? And from that point on, I was hooked. We know nicotine is addictive. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, he, he kept on trying and, 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 and Pastor gave him this. And, and when, when, when he got his breakthrough, hallelujah, when he got his breakthrough, he was free. Who the Lord had set free is free indeed. He says, brother, when you get the urge to, 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 to smoke, and you find yourself lighting up that cigarette? He said, go ahead, pray in tongues. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. He, he got he got that, let me, let me see if I, I can demonstrate that, okay? I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try this, let me see if I can demonstrate that. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. I wanna try and demonstrate that. I'm trying looking for a piece of paper so I can demonstrate that. So yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay. But uh, not 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 a, not the best example. But while he's going to light that thing up, he's going to light that thing up. He said, "Pray in tongues." Yeah, some of y'all looking at me like, "Yeah, pray." Blow, why are you blowing smoke? Pray in tongues. It wasn't long before. <laughs> he got rid of the cigarettes. Amen. If 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 your if your vice is the bottle, why you why you taking that swig? You you, you take that swallow. Yes, you speak in tongues, amen. And for those of you, amen, that don't have that gift yet, we're gonna pray at the end and pray that you receive that gift. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> we can crucify. Only, we can only crucify the desires of our flesh through the power of God's grace, His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and His Word. Amen. Uh, it, it, it's spiritual work. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to put the time in. You got to feed your spirit, man, if you're going to overcome the flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. You cannot, listen to me now, you cannot exercise or overcome your flesh by willpower. Amen. I say, I'm going to do this by, I'm, I'm going to will myself to stop. Let me tell you something. That's like trying to hold, you know, a compre uh, one of those uh, uh, a spring from a, from a vehicle, one, those big vehicle springs. You try and press that down, hold it down. Amen. After a while, your flesh going to begin to shake. Your hands going to begin to quake. Amen. And you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to hold that. Your hands going to be able to cramp. Your muscles going to be able to cramp. Amen. And you're not going to be able to hold that spring down for much longer. And once once your body gives up, that spring will come up and just bop you in the face. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how it is with the flesh. You try to suppress it by your willpower. Now, some people got strong willpower. Some people don't have such strong willpower. But willpower alone, willpower alone is not enough to overcome the battle of the flesh. Amen. You need to engage your spirit man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, one of the and one of the ways, one of the ways that we engage our spirit man and and help him to crucify the flesh is by fasting. Amen. Let me read this to you. During any time of fasting and prayer, we're taking control over our bodies. Amen. That's how we overrule the flesh. Turn the plate over. Turn the TV off. Turn off social media. Amen, somebody. Amen. Some of us can't get away from, from, from our devices. Amen. As soon as it buzz, as soon as it ring, we, we, you know, we going crazy. Turn that thing off. And for a few hours at first. Amen. Hallelujah. There are times when, where, where, where for days I won't, I, I don't even pick up my phone. I know TV is a weakness for me. I love science fiction. I love movies. And my wife and Pastor Vince always tell me, you need to turn that thing off. You need to turn that thing off and get, you need to turn that thing off. And, I, and, I'm, and, and I'm working on it. Amen. Hallelujah. See, we all have our vices. Amen. Hallelujah. No, 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 no big eyes and no little U's. Amen. Or big U's and little eyes. Amen. We all have our stuff to deal with. We all have our demons to fight. We all have our battles to fight. Amen. Our wars to fight. Amen. And wh wh whatever plane or whatever battlefield you find yourself on, I want to encourage you. 
hallelujah, to get into the word of God, amen, to pray in the spirit, amen, to find you a, a, an accountable partner, amen, somebody accountable, somebody that you can be accountable to, that you can trust, that won't look down on you, that won't laugh at you, that won't shun you, praise God, and uh, hallelujah, that won't shame you, but will lift you up and build you up, amen, keep you lifted up in prayer, glory to God, because the Bible says two are better than one. Because if one fall in the ditch, he has a, he has one to help him up. And then two are better than one because they have a, they have a, a, a better report for the, a better reward for their work. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. One can chase a thousand, two can put ten thousand to flight. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm loving this. <laughs> Hallelujah. So during any time of fasting and prayer, listen at me, we are taking control over our bodies. Amen. By denying our flesh what it desires in the area of food. Amen. So the first thing that fasting, the, the one of the first things that, that, that one of the, the primary thing, let's say it this way, the primary thing that, that, that fasting is, it means to shut the mouth. Amen. To close the mouth. No more food. Amen. And, uh, as long as I have been fasting, as for as long as I have been fasting, every time, every time, I get ready to fast and, and, and I go to work. They either have donuts or somebody has a buffet. <laughs> a cookout, you know, it's like a, 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 a luncheon. Hey, man, hey, we got food upstairs. I'm like, today, really? For for real, y'all? And and then, or I get a text. Uh, we got Krispy Kreme. We got donuts upstairs. I'm like, today? You you couldn't have them yesterday? Or, or you couldn't have it tomorrow? Why today? <laughs> But that's, you know, that's, that's, that's the test. As soon as you set your heart and as soon as you set your mind to do something for God, you're going to fast. You're going to turn over your plate. You're going to start reading your Bible. You're going to start praying. Beware the distractions. Amen. Because the enemy is not going to just sit back and, and cross his arm and say, okay, we'll, we'll let him fast a little bit. We'll, 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 we'll let him, we'll let him, uh, turn over the plate. We'll, 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 no, 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 no. As soon as you set your heart and your mind, praise God, to do what God called you to do, there's a target on your back. Amen. Here come the, the devil and then your flesh going to rise up. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So, so be aware, be aware that when you set your mind to do what God has called you to do. The enemy is not going to just sit back. Your flesh is not going to just sit back and let you do it. It's going to be a fight. Amen. And you got to persevere in the fight. And remember, this is the good fight of faith. And the good fight is the fight that we win. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So let's move on to, we're still talking about this flesh. And we want to talk about a particular part of the flesh as we, as we, we go, we're going to probably close here. Amen. Let's talk about a particular part of the flesh that really gets us in trouble. Amen. Amen. Talking about that tongue. The Bible says that our tongues should be as the pen of a ready write of a ready writer. Amen. Hallelujah. Or here's another one. Let no filthy communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good. Amen. To edifying that it may minister grace to the hearers. Our speech should be seasoned with grace, seasoned with salt, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So speaking about this tongue, we come to James chapter, James chapter three. Amen. This little hole in your mouth, this little member here that gets us in trouble so easily. Listen, listen at this. Uh, James chapter three, starting at the first verse. And my caption in the Bible here says, control the tongue. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, word, amen, <laughs> the, same is per the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body, or to bring his entire body, to bring his flesh into subjection. Amen. Behold, or look, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us and that we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which also, though they be great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm 
whithersoever the governor listed. So, you know, that you see how, how big those cruise ships are. Amen. Those cruise ships that you guys ride on or any kind of ship, sailing ship, any, any boat. It has a small rudder on the, on the back, on the bottom in the back that steers that thing. That, that, that little piece of material, whether it's steel, wood, plastic, uh, uh aluminum, it turns, it, tur it determines the direction of the entire ship. Amen. Hallelujah. Just like the tongue. It, it, it directs the direction of your the entire life. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Woo. Even so, the tongue. So he compares the tongue to a rudder on a ship. Amen. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Amen. The tongue is the kindling of a fire that, that blazes out of control. And the tongue, a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the entire body, the whole body, and set it on, and it is set on fire, the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. Oh my goodness. Hell fire from the tongue. Verse seven, for every kind of beasts and birds and of serpents and of things and the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Amen. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Then he goes on to make a comparison about a fountain. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives uh, or either a vine figs? So can no fountain do both. You salt water and fresh. Mm, hallelujah. So just like a, a fountain cannot bring forth salt water and fresh water, and just like an orange tree can't bear apples, and a lime tree can't bear lemons, so shall the tongue shall not be double-tongued. Amen. We shall not be double-tongued. Shall not be speak blessing and cursing. He said these things are not to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I wonder, yeah, let me, let me, let me pitch that from the, from the Amplified, if you will. Woo. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pick it up off at, uh, at verse five. He says, even so the tongue is a little member and it can boast of great things. See how much wood or how great a forest, a tiny spark can set ablaze. <laughs> and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is a world of wickedness set among our members contaminating and depraving the whole body and setting on fire the wheel of birth, the cycle of man's nature, being itself ignited by hell, Gehenna itself. Hallelujah. So, you know, if, if I can say this, what sends people to hell is their tongue. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Mm, 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 mm. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and re of reptile and sea and, and sea animal can be tamed as it has been tamed by human genius or nature. But the human tongue can be tamed by no man. It is a restless, undisciplined, irreconcilable evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord, the Father, and with it we curse men who were made after God's likeness. Amen. Amen. So when he says no man can tame the tongue. Man can tame with our tongue. Amen. Catch this. Catch this revelation. With our tongue, we can we can bring subject animals. We can train horses. We can train dogs. We can train cats. Amen. We can train animals. We we bring them subject. Amen. By our tongue. Amen. So it's 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 a, a, a an objective thing. Amen. But as a man, you can't tame somebody else's tongue. Amen. You have to bring your, your tongue subject. Hallelujah. Not, uh, not training, not looking at it as you're training someone to train their tongue. You can't train anybody's tongue. You can't tame anybody's tongue, but you can tame your own tongue. You can train your own tongue, not as objectively, but subjectively. Bring it under subjection. Crucify your flesh. That includes crucifying your tongue. The Bible says, set a watch over my mouth, O God. Set a watch before my teeth, O God. Amen. Set a, set a guard over the door of my lips. Amen. Amen. If you got problem with your tongue, problem with gossip, problem with cussing. Amen. Problem with, with misaligning folk. Amen. God set a watch over my lips. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable in thy sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. And why do we pray that? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever's coming out of the mouth is what's in the heart. You know, people say things that, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, that was what was in your heart. Whatever it is you said, that was what it, it was in your heart. Amen. And then you just need to repent. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I, Lord, I said that. Uh, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. I repent for saying that. Get that junk out of my heart. Get that junk out of me, Lord God. Clean me up. I've just exposed what is in me, Lord, and I release it to you and I repent of it. I turn away from it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, um, as, we, as we're talking about the tongue, I, I do want to share with you a few things about words. Uh, amen. Words have power. Words are containers. Amen. And as we're dealing with the flesh in spiritual warfare, we need to fully understand that we can't just say what we want to say, when we want to say it, how we want to say it, to whom we want to say it. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to be careful. Amen. Because words are life. Words are power. Amen. Once those words are like arrows, once you let that thing go, you can't, you can't pull it back. You cannot pull it back. Amen. It's out there. Amen. Hallelujah. Just have to ask God for mercy. Hallelujah. Listen at this. The power of language. Our social order is based primarily on language. Entire cultures are formed around a commonality of language, a phenomenon as we, as far back as, uh, as far as back as Genesis. Now the whole, this is from uh, uh, Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 and 2. Check this out from the Amplified. Now the whole earth spoke one language and used the same words, vocabulary. Amen. They spoke the same vocabulary. I mean, <clears throat> and as people journey eastward, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they settled there. Amen. The power of, la so we know, we know that about the Tower of Babel. Amen. Everybody was on one language. Everybody was speaking the same thing. They were, in, they were functioning in unity. They were in agreement. And then they said, let us build a tower that will reach the heaven. They got God's attention. You know what God said? He God said, let us go down and confound their language and see, because this thing that they have imagined, Amen. And whatever they have imagined, they will, they, they will accomplish. Amen. Nothing will be impossible for them. He says, so let's go down there and confuse their tongue. Let's go down there and confuse their language. Lest they do what they say, set their hearts or set their minds to do. Amen. Hallelujah. See, 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 God, God saw the power and they probably uh, had an inkling of it. The power of what they said. Amen. The power of their language, the power of their words, the power of their vocabulary. They were speaking the same thing. And Paul tells us in one of the epistles, we as believers need to be speaking the same things. Amen. Amen. When we begin to speak the same things as a body of Christ, we will be unstoppable. Amen. We will be unstoppable. Instead of having divisions on baptisms and the Lord's the Lord's Supper and 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 the, the gifts of the Spirit, yeah, yeah, enough of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh Lord. Okay, let me read this. There's there's something called the language of self sabotage. We still we we're still on the basis of the tongue, and we're still on the basis of of of, of words and vocabulary. There's a language of self sabotage. The thing, the words that you spoke, what you're living today. What you're living today is a result of words that you have spoken yesterday, years, months ago, years ago. Or words that you have allowed somebody to speak over you. Words are powerful. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo, let me talk a little bit about self. What is self-sabotage? Mm, 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 mm. Unconscious self-sabotage might manifest a negative self-talk. So what is your self-talk? What what uh, is your self-talk negative? If, do you have positive self-talk or do you have negative self-talk? Do you say to yourself when you when, when, uh, 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 do you say words like this to yourself? I, I am so stupid. Uh, uh, why I am so stupid. Be careful. Be careful. Or, or do you say words like, oh, I am bright. I am smart. I am intelligent. The difference. Amen. Or do you say, oh, I'm not going to make it today. It's going to be a bad day. It's going to be a bad day for me. It's raining outside. Oh, boy. It's going to be a soggy day. Or, 
Oh my, it's raining today. Liquid sunshine. The earth is being watered. Hallelujah. And at least we can get rid of some of this pollen in the air, and this dust in the air. Glory to God. It's going to be a good day. Hallelujah. At least uh, my, my landing gets, gets washed by the rain. <laughs> the difference. Oh my goodness. The difference. Hallelujah. Who? When you have self negative self-talk, your prayers will never get answered. I remember one teacher said, um, uh, one of my elementary teachers said, your negative self-talk is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because whatever you speak, whatever you speak comes to pass. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, or neutral, it comes to pass. So you got to watch the words of your mouth. You know, your words are like seed. When you plant them, words, words are like seed. When you speak them, they're being planted. Amen. And you liable to have a crop. So you got to watch what you say. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we have to change the way we speak. If you, if you, if you have a propensity to always speak negative, always speak bad. Amen. Take the effort. Make the, make the, the, take the decided effort. Make a disciplined decision to speak positively. Amen. Now, to be to speak positively or to be optimistic, you're not ignoring the situation if the situation is bad. Amen. You're acknowledging the situation, but you choose to speak uh, over that situation. Amen. Did not don't if you always speak what you see, you're gonna always get what you got. <laughs> Amen. If you always speak what's happening, if you always speak what's going on, if you always speak what is, it's gonna be what it is. Amen. Hallelujah. But we, like God, can call those things which be not as though they are. Hallelujah. Amen. Call what, what, call it what you want it to be. Amen. If it look bad, call it right. Call it good. If they ain't behaving, if they, if, if they out of line, say, I pray, Lord, the, Lord, these children are in line. I, I pray they are in line. They're they going to, they're going to straighten up. Amen. Instead of saying, y'all ain't about nothing. Y'all ain't going to ever be about nothing. Your father ain't about nothing. Your mother wasn't about nothing. Y'all, they don't do that. Don't do that. You're killing them. You're killing them children. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless them. Speak life. Speak life. To the Bible. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible tells us that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, death or life, shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. What fruit are you eating? The fruit that you are eating is a result of the words that you have spoken. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen and glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. So we, we have to deal with our talk, amen, hallelujah. And let me give you some points here, amen, on, on, uh, on self-sabotage or, 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 or changing our vocabulary, amen, hallelujah. We, we talk negative because we do not understand the power. We do not understand the strength of our words. We need to understand the strength of our words. Amen. Hallelujah. Loose, you, you, you all heard this, you all heard the saying, loose lips sinks, sinks ships. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. It is important that you govern your words and avoid negative self-talk. Amen. Rather than complaining or speaking negative words, learn to say what God says about your request. Learn to say what God says about your situation. Amen. Say it the same way it is said here in the Bible. Even if you have to quote verse and a uh, chapter and verse. Amen. But don't just be a quarter of the scripture. Make sure you're living that scripture as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not mental ascent. Amen. Bring it into your heart and into your spirit. Hallelujah. Number two. Amen. Lack of spiritual stamina. No. Amen. We got to go in God's gym. We got to stay in prayer. We got to be fasting. Amen. We got to consecrate ourselves. Praise God. We got to br bring this flesh under. Glory God. Crucify this flesh. That builds stamina. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we had a lesson on the, uh, the, 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 the spiritual disciplines. Amen. That's another lesson for another time. If you want spiritual, if you want to, uh, spiritual, build spiritual stamina, get into the nine spiritual, get it not, there are the, the, actually more than nine, but get into the spiritual disciplines. Amen. Discipline. Amen. You are a disciple. Glory to God. Amen. Number three, fear of failure. Oh, if I do that, uh, if I do that, it ain't going to work. Uh, the last time we tried that, we we almost died. No, don't don't talk like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't don't be afraid of failure. You fa use failure as an opportunity to learn. Amen. And to to do better the next time. Amen. Learn from our mistakes. Amen. And and I've made my share of them. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, here, here's another. Negative self-talk can produce fear within you. When fear comes in, doubt and unbelief follows. God wants you to be victorious in every area of your life. Amen. He also wants you to possess your portion. Let this fact become part of your foundation that you stand on. God wants you to possess your portion. Amen. You must possess what you confess. Hallelujah. You will possess what you confess. Glory to God. Amen. Number four, not knowing the word of God. Amen. Don't be ignorant of the word of God. Don't be ignorant of the word of God. Get in the word of God. Study the word of God. Amen. Get it in your soul. Get it in your spirit. Amen. It is life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus said that the words that I say unto you, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. Hallelujah. When you are not sure what you're asking for in, in, uh, in uh, that's in alignment with God's will, get his word. Amen. Hallelujah. When, you, when you're not sure, it can create double-mindedness. And the Bible tells us a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. Amen. So you need to be single-minded. Amen. Speaking one thing. Amen. Glory to God. Being consistent in your speaking. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praying the scriptures is an effective foundation for praying and helps you to overcome in this area, not knowing the word of God. See, sometimes you can just take the scripture and just pray it word for word. Just pray it like it's written here. Amen. And let the Holy Spirit expound on that. Let the Holy Spirit uh, 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 elaborate on that on that word that you're praying. Amen. The Bible says that angels hearken unto the voice of the Lord or the voice of the word. We are the ones that give voice to the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Not knowing, here's another thing on, on, on self-sabotage, not knowing God's prophetic promises for you. All the promises of God are yes and in him are yes and amen. Amen. You got to know what God has promised for you. You got to know that he promised to save you. You got to know that he promised to heal you. You got to know that he promised to delivery, deliver you. You got to know that he promised to prosper you. You got to know that he promised to bless you. Amen. Amen. You got to know that he promised to answer your prayers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then uh, let, me, let me just continue reading this. When you do not understand your portion, which is your inheritance, hell will emphasize hell, hell will attempt to seize it. See what you don't if you don't know what's yours, hell gonna come and take it. Amen. 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 Adam and Eve were given a garden to tend and you also have a garden, a portion to tend. That God has given you. Allow the Holy Spirit to open your eyes and to see your God-given portion. Ask God what He has shown you. Ask God what He has given you. Two short, two quick indications on how you know what God has given you. One, it is something that you naturally do. You, you have a propensity. You have a gift. You have a knack. It comes like second nature. That's something that God has called you to do. The second indication that you know that there's something that God has called you to do is something that gets you angry. You see something happening and say, well, why don't somebody do something about this? Why don't somebody fix that problem? Why, why, did somebody, why hasn't somebody already addressed this issue? That's an indication that God has called you to fix it. Mm -hmm. Amen. I hope I'm being, I hope, I'm, I hope this is blessing somebody. Amen. Amen. And then, uh, number six, no revelation. No revelation. People perish without revelation. People cast off all, where there is no redemptive word, where there's no revelatory word, the people cast off restraint or run like wild horses. And you look out there right now, there are a bunch of folk running around like wild horses because they ain't got no revelation of what's coming. Don't get quiet on me, this Presbyterian church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Without revelation, you will not receive strategies to overcome your enemy and see your portion return. Prayer and worship create an atmosphere of faith within you and position you to receive revelation from the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So that is very, very powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to praise and worship God. And I do want to get into one more scripture as we, as we, as we get ready. I said we're going to close on this, but I really need to, to deal with this, with this other point, this other part about carnality, dealing with our flesh. Amen. The carnal, what, what the carnal nature, what the carnal nature is to God. Check this out. Amen. So coming at, uh, coming out of Romans chapter eight. Amen. Romans chapter eight. Listen, listen at this. Glory to God. Woo. Oh Lord. 
There is now therefore no condemnation, no guilty verdict to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in, in Christ Jesus has made me, made us all free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh or, or, or decreed uh, sin guilty. <laughs> that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So as we are fighting, as we get ready to, I know I said we get ready to close over and over again, but... Uh, uh, the, the, Lord, the Holy Spirit is just, is just leading me leading me here. There's just so much more that we, that we can say about the flesh. Amen? Listen, he says, We do not walk after the flesh. The, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us for those of us who do not walk after the flesh, after this carnal nature, but after the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And they that are after the Spirit do mind the things of the Spirit. So don't mind the flesh. I know we have to live in this flesh. See, we are a spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. We live in this body, in this flesh, this carnal nature. And we have a mind. We have a soul. Amen. Which is our mind, our will, our intellect, our imagination, our emotions, and our memories. Amen. For to be carnally minded, to be fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Hallelujah. So you want peace? Live in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So the, the, the carnal flesh is the enemy of God. Hallelujah. Our enemy in spiritual warfare is this carnal nature. Amen. And then I, uh, I have a reference there, 1 Corinthians 2, uh, and then uh, uh, Galatians 5, which, which, which I'll turn to in a minute. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Let's go to Galatians 5, and then, and then, and then, and then I will come right back. Hallelujah to God. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. L listen to what Galatians chapter 5 said. So if you are in the flesh... First of all, you know if you are in the flesh, you cannot we, you cannot please God, right? L listen to this. Oh boy. Galatians chapter 5 at the 18th verse. He says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, yet now we, we, we're getting to the real, we, we talk about a lot of things about the flesh, but I think here in these scriptures now we're getting to the nitty gritty of dealing with the flesh. Amen. Uh, verse uh, Galatians 5 and 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. So there's a constant war between the flesh and the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's not an endless, unending tug of war. Amen. Hallelujah. We can win. You can defeat the flesh. Amen. He said, but if you be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. And now he tells us what the works of the flesh are. So we just read in Corinthians that we said if you, if we are in the flesh, the, the, the carnal mind, or the, the, the carnal nature is the enemy, is the enemy of God, right? And the, the, here, here it is. Now the, the works of the flesh, or the, 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 pro, the produce of the flesh are these, which are manifest. He says, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, just living loose, doing what you want to do, loosey-goosey, uh -huh. idolatry, witchcraft. Witchcraft is not spiritual. Witchcraft is a manifestation of the flesh. Okay, amen. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderings, drunkenness, revelings, party spirit, amen, and such the like of which I tell you before, as also, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen, amen. But then he goes on to tell us of the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is, there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh, have killed the flesh, put it to death. Amen. With the affections and the lust. Amen. For if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 
Amen. 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 Uh, Romans, uh, back to, back to Romans, Romans eight. Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to go back to Romans five. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. So then that are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of God, he, the spirit of Christ, the spirit, uh, if, any, if any man have not the spirit, hallelujah, of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then let me jump down to verse 12. He says, therefore, brethren, we are not debtors to the flesh to live after the flesh. You don't owe, we don't owe this flesh nothing. Amen. We don't owe this flesh anything to live after the flesh. And verse 13 says, For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, we shall live. Amen. So it's by the Spirit that we crush, that we put to death the things of the flesh. Amen. So that we may live. Amen. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of, of, of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. For the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> let me, let me read something from, uh, from Romans chapter, Romans chapter 5. Is it Romans chapter 5 or is it Romans chapter 6? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Romans chapter 6. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, listen to this, listen to this. Romans chapter 6, starting at the 11th verse. Likewise, reckon yourselves also dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let not sin reign therefore in your mortal body, that ye should obey the lust thereof. Amen. So that's living according to the flesh, living according to sin, uh, let, having letting sin reign in our mortal bodies. Amen. He says, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness, your ears, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your tongue, your hands, your feet, your sexual organs. Hallelujah. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God and those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under grace. Hallelujah. 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 So we, we want to pause right here. We want to stop right there. We've gone, a, we've gone a minute. Amen. Hallelujah. But we just want to thank God that we are able to overcome the strength of the flesh by living in the spirit. He says, if you live, if we live according to the spirit, we will mortify the deeds of the flesh. And we just read in Galatians 5 what the works or what the manifest or what the produce of the flesh is and what the produce of the spirit is. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I hope that you all have been encouraged today. I hope that you have, have, have gleaned something today. Amen. And what we've, what we've, what we've discussed here about the battle the, and, and our, our warfare, our spiritual warfare, the, our, our enemy, the flesh. Amen. Overcome the flesh. Beat the flesh. Crucify the flesh. Paul says, I handle my flesh roughly. Amen. I handle my flesh roughly. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, oh, Lord have mercy. We pray that you've been blessed by this message. Amen. I want to close, really close this time with one scripture from Romans chapter 14. <clears throat> Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof. Amen. Amen. And let me pull that from the Amplified. Romans, Romans 13 and 14. Oh, I, I love how it, how it comes out in the Amplified. Romans 13 and 14 from the Amplified reads as follows. But clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and make no provision for indulging in the flesh. Put a stop to thinking about evil cravings of your physical nature, to gratify its desires and its lusts. Amen, amen, amen. So that is how we overcome the flesh. That is how we win this spiritual warfare from our enemy, the flesh, the carnal nature. We could have gone a different way. We could have gone, we could have spoken about a whole lot of different uh, other things, but we have a lot to cover 
uh, as we begin to, as we talk about our other two enemies, as we discuss our other two enemies, the enemies of the world and our enemy, the devil. Amen. This is Pastor G from Covenant Kingdom International Ministries. I pray that you were blessed by this message. And if, if you are listening to this message and you are not saved, amen, we want to give you the opportunity to uh, receive Jesus Christ, or conf confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. And for those of you that want the Holy Spirit, uh, just hang around and hang out, and uh, we, we will pray for that as well. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those that have tuned into this message, and I pray that they were blessed and encouraged as if they are struggling in their body, if they are struggling in their flesh, that what we have spoken today, Lord God, may have uh, in some way, shape, or form encouraged them and give them uh, not just information, but impartation to fight the good fight of faith and to be victorious in the flight against this carnal nature. It is a daily flight. It is a daily fight. It is an hourly fight, a moment by moment fight, Lord, when this flesh doesn't want to seek to gain advantage over us. But if we live in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of this flesh. In Jesus name, we thank you. Amen. So those of you if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, say this prayer after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I am a sinner. Your word says, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. So I know you won't cast me out, but you take me in. And your word tells me that if I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I believe that God had raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. For the word says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, God for saving me and for giving me the power to become a son of God by believing in your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's all it takes, my friend. That's all it takes. And the heavens are rejoicing. The Bible says that the angels, all of heaven rejoices for the one sinner that repents. Amen. That for the 99 that don't need any repentance. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. So we thank God for you today. Amen. Find a church, find a fellowship, find a household of prayer, find a ministry. Amen. That's teaching the word. That's teaching the incorruptible, indestructible, irrefutable word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. That that will help you to grow in your battle. That will help you to grow in your walk with Jesus Christ, in your new life with Jesus Christ. And for those of you that, 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 that are ready to receive the Holy Spirit, you know, the Bible says, if a son asks for a fish, will he give him a stone, or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a serpent? And he says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Amen? So if that's you, just say this prayer. There, say this with me. Dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I have confessed him as Lord and Savior, and I believe that God raised him from the dead for my justification. I come to you now, Lord, asking you for the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I thank you, Lord, for your precious gift. For your word says that we are to pray in the Holy Spirit, building up ourselves on our most holy faith. So I thank you, Lord, now for receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. Some of you already began to speak in tongues and whatever unction, you're gonna, it's gonna be foreign to your tongue, but you have to open your mouth. The, the Spirit gives you the unction, but you have to open your mouth, amen, and speak the words, amen, hallelujah. Continue to believe God, continue praying, amen, and uh, th th that gift is for today.
Amen. That's only one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But that's a gift for today. Amen. We're not the sensation, the sensationalists that said the gift died with the apostles because they're not the gift of the apostles. They're the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he still lives and resides within us. Amen. Glory to God. Again, this is Pastor G from Covenant Kingdom International Ministries. Give us a like. Amen. If you enjoyed the message today. Amen. Go ahead and share. Uh, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified every time we produce our broadcast. We God bless you. We love you. Until next time. The flesh. There are two, actually three words for the flesh. In Hebrew word is basar. It means the skin or meat of animals or man. And in the Greek version of the word, there are two versions of the word in Greek. Sarx and soma. The body, both of men or animals, a dead body or corpse, and then the bodies of planets and of stars or heavenly bodies. The flesh or carnal nature denotes the sinful element of human nature, the earthly nature of man, apart from divine influence as opposed to the spirit and therefore prone to sin and opposed to God. We see that in Romans chapter 6 verse 19 and Matthew chapter 16 verse 17. Being in the flesh means being unrenewed and to live according to the flesh is to live and act sinfully the flesh the carnal nature is weaker is the weaker element in our human nature the flesh or the carnal nature is the seat of sin in man but this is not the same thing as in the body and we see that in second peter 2 18 first john 2 16. and the last point here the lower the the flesh the carnal nature is the lower and the temporary element of the Christian. That's the carnal, that's carnal analysis, carnality, the carnal Christian and religious ordinances. So we pray that you are blessed by this message. The enemies of our spiritual warfare, the flesh.